Mr. Hales, you've been served with the temporary injunction, correct? Everyone wants to know, how did things go in Ohio court? Well, I can tell you, it was bad. For them, not for me. Yesterday was court in Ohio, and it was bad for Lynette, John Crook, and it was great for me. It was actually invigorating being in a real court session with real guidelines and rules, and you don't talk over a judge, and, and you don't say foolish things on and on and on and on over and over again. Here's what happened in that court case, and then I'm going to show you the rest of hearing number two in Levy County, Florida. So, from the get-go, the judge shared with both Lynette and John, Lynette's went first, John Crook went second, and said, do you understand that you are under oath and everything you say can and will be used against you in any other hearings? She said that on purpose because my lawyer from Florida was in on the session. That was legal as he represents me in Florida. And we are getting transcripts of everything they said. Under oath. Whenever you're under oath, if you're lying, that's not good. If you're saying things that are false, oh boy, not good at all. And boy, did they do some doozies. So the judge warns them, you do not have to give testimony. You can waive your right to give testimony in this hearing. And they both go on to spew out and incriminate themselves. And I'll share with you exactly what happened. From the very get-go, the judge warned Lynette, we were not going to talk about anything in Florida. We were not going to rehash things in Florida. She is not to bring up Florida over and over again. And what did Lynette do? Florida, 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 Florida. Okay. And from the get-go, the judge told her, stop. At one point, the judge even said, listen, I'm not trying to be rude, but you need to stop. And so the judge put her in her place. That was so refreshing. An actual judge doing the unbiased job of a judge. And you may be thinking, Jeremy, unbiased. Uh, she told Lynette to stop. Yeah, Lynette was way off of center. Just like the judge in Florida should have told her to stop and brought her back to the actual hearing. So here's some of the things that actually happened. I took some notes and sent them to George. Okay, Lynette, very first thing. Lynette actually gets into her hearing and she objects to the hearing as a whole. And she says, you must grant me a continuance. And the judge says, based on what? And Lynette says, I have no evidence, and I just learned of this hearing. Okay, well, you already know that's a lie. She didn't just learn of it. She was notified. So the judge verifies that she was notified and when she was notified, and then says, you had ample time to file for right of discovery, which Lynette has no idea what these words mean, uh, except she has, and so has John, learned quite a bit from the first hearing in Ohio, because Lynette has actually taken everything that George and I have said in testimony and tried to utilize it and duplicate it in Florida, okay? Such as Lynette saying, now I'm in counseling. In Florida, she said CPS set her up for counseling. Uh, what does that tell you? There's a case plan. Okay, well, George is in counseling because of all this stress and all this drama. Lynette tried to duplicate it in Florida. She didn't duplicate it in Ohio. She had to hear it first in Ohio and then duplicate it. And the list can go on and on what they duplicated. For example, continuance. As she's seen two hearings so far in Florida, I've needed a continuance. Not because of me, because of what she has done. So she demands the judge for a continuance. You must give it to me. I had no evidence. And the judge goes on. You had ample time to file for right of discovery. You did not choose to exercise your right. And Lynette goes on and off at her, yelling at her, saying, you're trying to do this. You're trying to do that. And the judge tells her, I have given you every aspect of leeway. I did not have to give you a Zoom link. Yeah, I've could have required you to fly to Ohio to be here in person, which by the way, I did. 
And my lawyer stressed that, that Jeremy actually went through horrific weather. I drove two hours to Tampa in tropical storm, hurricane weather. It was horrific in Florida, driving at sometimes 15 miles an hour, not being able to see five, five feet in front of me with winds blowing me all over the highway, with a flight that's delayed because of the weather, and then I finally got in late and here in time for the hearing. I went through tremendous expense and danger to actually be in the hearing. And the judge says, this hearing will go on. And Lynette is furious. Lynette's so furious as we get into the actual hearing and we talk about the aspects of breaching and breaking the civil protection order. We start with number one, which happened at the sheriff's office in Levy County. Now, it's very clear now to us, to Levy County in Ohio, there is no safe building for them to be at. There is no neutral ground where they can be where we're at. Now, if we're in court and Lynette's in court and she has a court date and I have a court date, we can be there. That does not mean John Crook can be outside of the courthouse. That's not a safe zone. He's actually breaking the civil protection order, and he has three times so far, and that was brought up in court as well. In the very first session, in the sheriff's office, as the very first day we get back to Otter Creek, Levy County, Florida, as we announced the night before, that's the first place we're going. This is the session and the very first session incident that is discussed as contempt of court. And what does Lynette do? She immediately calls the Levy County Sheriff, has the phone, this is no joke, has the phone on speakerphone, trying to get second in command on the phone. She's going, they're coming after Jeremy, they're doing this and they're doing that, and I have a session with a detective. And she doesn't even know the detective's name. I do know the detective's name because I already met with the de detectives this past Monday, and they are pressing charges and prosecuting. And so... I already know what her meeting about the detective is. This is the funny thing. She's so full of she has no clue, which that meeting will be today. You're watching this. It probably already happened. It's not a meeting for anything positive for her. She's under investigation. They're pressing charges. She'll be arrested. If ample evidence exists, which does. So she's on the phone, literally on speakerphone, for almost 10 minutes, Levy County Sheriff, trying to get the sheriff on the phone, saying, I want video of what happened. Well, we already have video of what happened. The world has seen what happened. And they broke the civil protection order. And I feel confident sharing with you that the state attorney and the Levy County detectives are considering this the most ample proof for arrest for Lynette and John Crook as they stalked us to the Levy County Sheriff Department. Then they parked right next to our truck and trailer. They did not remove themselves. They showed no aspect of removing themselves whatsoever until the deputies made them remove themselves. Who in the world goes into a court session and starts dialing the sheriff? Only Lynette. The individual who will incriminate herself and John the Crook over and over and over again. So eventually the judge tells her, listen, you better straighten up. You do anything else like this, I'm going to boot you out of court. She, and she verifies to say, this is, I have given you leeway to be here in Zoom, on Zoom. And the aspect that you are now disrespecting that, this is a courtroom and you will act as if it's a courtroom. And Lynette goes on to say, no, I'm in my shed. I'm in a shed. I'm, I, I'm in a shed. Illegally living in a shed with a child with a life-threatening condition in Florida boggles my mind. Absolutely boggles my mind. So then Lynette goes on to say that she wants to show videos. Okay. She wants to show video of when John Crook's in the middle of the road. And she's filming John Crook in the middle of the road. Now, she's already posted these videos, and others have taken these videos and posted them for her. Which, to that, we say thank you. My goodness, how foolish is this person and all the persons that follow her and post incriminating evidence? I, I don't know. I don't know how you get any dumber. World's dumbest criminals. Literally posting her videos all over. They cannot be in any public or private building. They cannot be on any public or private road within 500 feet. Period. 
There is no exception. There is no but. There is no, well, I don't feel that's the way it should be. That's the law, period. And only Lynette would come going, I have to show this video. You have to see this video. And it's a video incriminating herself and John Crook and all the fools that are out there sharing the video as well. We say thank you. We appreciate that. Thank you for helping build our case more and more. And the judge, <laughs> oh my God, could you imagine being the judge? Can you imagine being the judge and going, I cannot believe this person is just incriminating and incriminating and incriminating themselves. Judge allows it. As a matter of fact, my attorney states, yeah, we have no objection. We're going to show the exact same videos. And so <laughs> it's funny now. It was not funny during the, the aspect of it. And so Lynette is so set on she has to show these videos stating that I'm breaking the civil protection order. Now, keep in mind, no matter what you think, because there's been so many comments on this, oh, when you have a civil protection order, it's both ways. No, there is no such thing as a legal mutual civil protection order. There's no civil protection order on me whatsoever. My life doesn't change at all, at all. As a matter of fact, at one point during John's trial, he said, why were you driving down the road when I was in the road? And my answer was the same reason why I drive down the road when you're not in the road. That's the direction to my property. My life doesn't change based on the civil protection order. You are illegally in the road and need to remove yourself. That's it. That's it. Has nothing to do with me, has everything to do with them. Incriminating, incriminating, incriminating. That's what these two did to themselves over and over and over again. Uh, Lynette was all bent on, oh, oh, I want to, I want to show. So she's got her phone. She's got her phone. And the, the judge says, listen, I am not going to let you admit evidence. You had ample time to share any evidence, any, any documents, any videos, which she did, but she didn't send them in. And she goes, I didn't know. I didn't know what I could do. Your office didn't tell me anything. And the judge goes, my office isn't your lawyer. You had ample right to a lawyer. You've already sent documents into this court. You could have sent all of this to this court, but the we don't object. We actually say, yes, please show the video. So my side, my lawyer goes, no, 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 please show the video. We're going to show it as well. It is self-incriminating. Please go for it. So at that point, what goes on is, uh, let's see what's next here. Okay, so then we're going through her new Facebook, okay? Her new Facebook group, which they have created multiples right now. And uh, Marli Huge is part of one as well. And that'll be incriminating for her. And again, thanks. I mean, you, you people just keep heaping the evidence upon evidence upon evidence. I mean, absolutely <laughs> mind-boggling. Literally, world's dumbest criminals. Now, as I share this, please understand that this is YouTube, and this is the largest media platform in the world sharing news, and this is the news of my life. This is not intended for any purposes of communicating with any person in Otter Creek. This is documentation for accountability and a scrapbook of our life and sharing the news of our life, okay? And it is never appropriate for you to contact anybody whatsoever. You can learn from these experiences, and you can also be entertained from these experiences. So with that being said, uh, she goes on to tell the judge that she will scroll through her entire Facebook page. She'll show everything on her Facebook page because what she did was post everything on the civil protection order on her Facebook page. Her new one that she created after she was served with a civil protection order. And then she put the pages on there. I'll scroll through it all. She goes on to say, I, I've given my phone to the sheriff. I've given it to the state attorney. I've told them they can see everything. And the judge goes, I have no desire to see a Facebook page as of right now. I only care about when it was posted. Which then Lynette goes on to state, I am the only one that can post on this page. Nobody else can post on this page. And my lawyer's like, huh, that's odd because you said you didn't post these things. Somebody else must have, but you're the only one that can post on this page. It's for the first time. It's the first time in a hearing that she hasn't said that Marli Huge is the one that's guilty of everything. It's literally the first hearing, Ohio and Florida, where she hasn't tried to throw Marli Huge under the bus and say she's the one that's guilty and not her. I found it shocking, but it is what it is. Maybe she's learning. 
Maybe she's learning to stop trying to bounce off that uh, that uh, incriminating that incriminating stuff to, to other people that are support. I wouldn't call that support. All she can doing is help incriminating Lynette. And she's going, I'll, I'll scroll through it all. I'll show you everything. I've already shown the sheriff everything. The judge goes, I do not want to see anything on your phone. And I don't think anybody ever would. And then comes Crook. All right. Here's the craziest thing in the world right now, all right? Crook comes up. And Crook is mumbling to himself. He's in the shed. All right, now, here's what you don't know yet. Lynette and John Crook both have depositions this upcoming week. And um, hers is scheduled all day. His is a good portion of the day, probably three quarters of a day. And in all of this Florida stuff, she's been very clear. I will not let John Crook in my thing. Because she's been clear that these two don't live in the same thing. Remember, they don't have a home. Uh, they live illegally in a shed. It's completely and totally against Florida laws and statutes. Not only that, and frankly, I could care less if they do, except there is a child involved. And not only just a child, apparently a life-threatening. And you got them living in a shed? I mean, come on, come on. This is newsworthy and should be blown up all over the world that a child with a life-threatening disease is living illegally in a shed in Florida. I'm sure this will be a Netflix documentary somewhere down the road. Once I sell the rights, which is probably pretty soon, because people are coming to knocking and calling. I've already, I've already had A&E try and get all of my videos with myself and John and Lynette, and we agreed on a price. But we did not agree on the aspect of editing. Once they, once they, once A and E says, "All right, we'll we'll take it exactly as it is and we'll show it as it is," I would not let them edit it. I wouldn't give them any editing rights. Then they can have them. But until then, Netflix is a calling. So let's go back. Lynette says she will never, ever, ever let John in her thing, which is her shed where she lives. John is in her thing, her shed where she lives. And a child lives. And John is mumbling and talking and already getting in trouble because they are not allowed to have anybody else in there at all. At all. So here's the craziest thing with Crook. He downright self-incriminates and admits he is true to his name. So we have the whole video of him in the road. He is not allowed to make any communication contact whatsoever, right? And it's brought up that he yells to me, suck my, and you can fill in the blank. And John Crook admits, remember, remember what the judge said? The judge said to both of them, are you sure you want to go on record under oath? Because this can and will be used against you. He admits under oath, yes, I said, suck my. And then he says, that he told that to Lynette. And my lawyer goes, hold a second. He goes, are, are you saying that you told Lynette to suck your... He goes, yes. I said those words to Lynette. <laughs> you cannot make this stuff up. I'm serious. You So first of all, he incriminates himself. He admits that he says the words. Then he says he didn't say it to me. He said it to Lynette, okay? Oh, my goodness. I And and all, myself, my lawyer, the judge, our eyes are like huge. We can't believe what's happening. Literally cannot believe what's happening. Oh, my goodness. Can't believe what's happening. Then there's communication happening inside the thing, you know, the shed. And... And there, there's communication, and there's a female voice. And the judge says, Mr. I'm going to keep calling him Crook. Mr. Crook, is there somebody in the shed with you? He goes, no, 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 there's nobody in the shed with me. As a hand comes into the camera and passes him a note. <laughs> I, I, right there, you have contempt of court. He could have gone to jail. All right. Hand comes into the camera, passes him a note. It's Lynette. And the judge goes, all right, for the record, we are going to state that there is a female voice in the shed with you currently, which 
he can be prosecuted for later. Okay. All right. I, 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 these two. Uh, you cannot make it up. You can. You literally cannot make this stuff up. All right. Uh, crook. He objects to everything, which he did before. He objects. He says, I object to everything, which then the judge says, listen, I told you this last time. I'm going to tell you again. You can't just object to everything. You can't just say, I object. This isn't the movies. This is real court. You have to have a reason to object. You can't just go, I object. And Crook goes, well, I do. I object. And she says, if you can't stop, I'm going to put you on mute. Which she said the exact same thing to Lynette as well. Okay. And uh, now, if you remember the very first hearing at the end, John Crook says, Your Honor, Your Honor, you don't understand. It's so much bigger than this. Tube Town is coming. They're trying to silence me. At the end of it, this time, it was, Your Honor, Your Honor. This is what it all sums up to be. Isn't it true, Jeremy, that I filed an ethics violation on the current mayor and you are named in four of those ethic violations and you're doing this for the ethic violations? Which my simple answer is no. It's pretty easy. No. Uh, how would I know about the ethics violations that you filed? Oh, that's right. He posted it all over Facebook. Okay. Um... Let's see, what else? Uh, I thought it was about Tube Town. So not, now it's all about ethics violations? It's not about Tube Town anymore? Your Honor, Your Honor, I filed false documents with the state. Your Honor, I put Jeremy's name in them. You know how many people put my name in things every single day? Which, by the way, some of your people like sail away. Third party communication tagging me. Oh, yeah, busted. Third party communication on your behalf, tagging me, communicating on your behalf. Oh, posting videos on your behalf. Third party communication. You're going to jail. You're going to jail. These people aren't helping you, they are condemning you. And so that is the way it literally ends. Now, as I laugh and I recall these events with you, I will share with you as well. And this is not something that I typically, or I think, ever have talked about. There are times in my life where I have anxiety attacks and um, they're few and far between for me. But uh, during this process, I did have to request a, a five minute recess. I started to go into an anxiety attack. And so people ask all the time, Jeremy, how do you and George, how do you handle all this humor? We try and make humor out of it. The reality is this is so stressful. Anybody who can listen to her voice for two hours straight, God bless them because it is difficult and it it just takes the anxiety level up so high. Listening to the mumble, jumble, garbage that comes out of their mouths with no intent of any, any purpose, no intent of any context. It just goes on and on and on. And then you got him coming in there trying to think he's the greatest thing that God's ever created. He's literally... When I request a recess and the judge says, we're going to take a five minute recess. He's like, yeah, you take a recess. You go ahead. You take a recess. Oh my goodness. Now he doesn't know I was having it. I was starting a panic attack or an anxiety attack. Uh, my lawyer does. And the judge didn't know either. And I just had to step out. I had to breathe, gather my composure. I'd been sitting for almost three hours, listening to garbage upon garbage upon garbage upon garbage. And so I did, I had to. I mean, that's the reality of this. As much as we show the humor side of it, uh, it's extremely stressful for both George and I. Extremely. And, and so it's not fun by any stretch of the imagination. I don't wish this upon anybody. These are garbage people. They are literally garbage people. And garbage comes out of their mouth. Their property is complete and total garbage. And the things they say is garbage. And so that did happen as well. Now, afterwards... Afterwards, I did talk with my lawyer and I apologized to him. And I said, listen, like these people. And he goes, oh, trust me, I know. He goes, I have never met two more exhausting people in all of my life. And he says, Jeremy, I made a New Year's resolution. I was going to have a dry month of January. I wasn't going to touch, touch anything. I was going to have a dry month of January. He goes, that resolution is gone after today. And then he jokingly says, and I want to I emphasize jokingly, because we are suing 
for all legal fees. And I do believe I will receive all that. And he goes, jokingly, he goes, I'm charging you double for this. And I told him, you deserve way more for having to put up with all of that. I forgot to tell you, Lynette tells the judge that she is paralyzed, absolutely paralyzed to her home. She can't go anywhere. She can't do anything. She can only go to the store and medical appointments because she's paralyzed. Which then my lawyer goes, did you or did you not just put in a letter for a town hall council position? And she goes, well, I didn't fill out the application. And I'm thinking, oh boy, Don and his applications. And she goes, I, I put in a letter of interest. That doesn't mean I'm going to do it. And then she goes, I don't know if I can do it. Because if I lose my temporary injunction on him, I'm not going to do it. But if I can have my injunction, I'm going to do it. Yep. That's the person who's paralyzed in the brain. Now that I've shared about Ohio, you also should understand that the magistrate is waiting for Lynette to send in a video that she already has from me. But Lynette has the opportunity to send in a video on a flash drive to the 19th. And then she will make her verdict. And I have no doubt whatsoever, no doubt whatsoever, with all the testimony that was given, with communication on Facebook, third-party communication with people like Sail Away and Marla Huge and other people, all of the incidences with John in the road, they were at the sheriff's station, John continually being at the courthouse, the post office incident, they will absolutely get charges. And there's potential that um, there's going to be a warrant for arrest. And Levy County Sheriff have already told us they will extradite them, bring them back to Ohio for jail, for trial. Now, let's jump back into the second hearing. And in the second hearing, you are going to see the judge, Craig DeThomasis, change his personality at some point. The, the anger goes off and normal, whoever he is, turns back on. It's Feather who says to me, this premise of speaking to Miss Preston would be violating violating a court order from a judge and or magistrate in the state of Ohio. And then I get an allegation that I have to accept is true. It may not be ultimately when we get to an evidentiary hearing, but I, accept, I have to accept it is true that he's contacted her and on multiple occasions offers her cash to to drop this or to or to settle, some way settle this. And that on top of everything else I've already talked about exhaustively here is very troubling um, and has to be considered when we're considering continuing this thing even again. There is at least on the face of what's pled, and I know you're restricted in, in maybe not being able to say more, that there's a possibility that the motion to continue is manipulative at best. That being said, I've already said we could probably come up with conditions in addition to the general ones of the temporary that would satisfy this court, allow for Mr. Hales to have fully effective representation because of a, attaining a fully prepared lawyer um, and giving Ms. Preston peace of mind between now and then, even if it's at the cost of what I consider slight, but still some measure of inconvenience of having to come back, but everybody would have to come back. And we may not have finished today either. I don't know, Judge. We may have wind up being here at 445 and witnesses and who knows, right? So I've considered that as well. Yeah. I've considered that as well. Um, so with regards to the temporary, this is my this is my concern. It doesn't address the specifics of cyber stalking as is alleged and which this court has only heard really the one side and not even all of it but it hasn't it hasn't addressed to this court's satisfaction um, meaning the general language contained in the temporary injunction that's currently in place it's the buffer zone contact uh, language but not specifically addressing to this court's satisfaction the posting of YouTube videos and or other social media posts and or other um, publications or documents, videos, photos, 
and the like that have been the cause of what is alleged and purports to be, from Ms. Preston's perspective, causing substantial emotional distress. Um, so you As you can see, this is no longer a fight for just myself and George and our freedom of speech. This is now a legal issue for every single YouTuber in the world. Billions, not millions, billions of channels fighting for their freedom of speech. What's Judge Craig DeThomas going to do next? Go after every TV station, newscaster, radio station, radio program, magazines, and the list can go on and on and on. This is all protected freedom of speech. I have never broken a law in regards to protected freedom of speech. Ever. Ever. And how in the world is he going to hold me accountable for what others have done? Remember, this is a slippery slope. Because if he goes down that road, I have thousands of screenshots of what Lynette's followers have done under her control and her telling them to do, and to say, and to post, and the list goes on and on. You could add that to paragraph one, because it mentions cyberstalking in paragraph one. I want to just be clear what that, what that means. Okay. Um, the language that um, I would propose, hang on, because I've done this before. that the respondent and or anyone under his control employed by him and or in any way under his direction, including but not limited to any and all administrators as frustrators of any form of social media, has the responsibility to assure that he does not, nor do they in any form whatsoever, utilizing any media platform or conduit of information of the name, image, and or likeness and or any information, data, photography, videos related to or pertaining to the petitioner and or her minor child. In other words, because you're associated with me, you're watching. If you even type Lynette's name, which isn't even her legal name, right? We both get that, right? If you even type Lynette's name, you are incriminating me. How in the world am I held responsible for somebody else's actions? Uh. This is rather interesting because he's attacking your freedom of speech and my freedom of speech. He's attacking the world's freedom of speech. And let's not forget that anything we've ever posted about Lynette or any video, number one, public information. Number two, she's made herself a public figure running for public office yet again. And it's a repost of what she's posted, even if it's been of her minor child, where we have shown the neglect and the abuse of that child. We have reposted what she has posted. She is the one that has made it public information. It's really a definite. It's it's a it's a stretch on the definition of cyber stalking. Right. That's but what I was going to say. You're in court, it's almost like adopting the the statute. The but I don't want there to be misunderstanding right. about what our statute says yes. and and the specific circumstances of this case. Yes. Understood. So I'm trying to narrowly tailor it um, and not infringe on his other rights to communication and or um, speech, but as it relates to this person, this individual. It's a stretch. I didn't realize the courtroom was the place for yoga poses. It's way beyond a stretch. And he's clearly stated in the past, there is no evidence that I have done anything wrong. And then he says he doesn't want to impose on my freedom of speech. No, 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 not this judge. He just wants to impose on yours. And so what I guess my question then is, if there's consensus on those restrictions, what will be left for us to, to discuss possibly will be the rescheduling in terms of timing. If there's disagreement about those conditions, it will impact whether or not there's a continuance at all um, and or whether or not this court needs to hear from you as to what alternative might, might need to be in place. Let me interpret that for you. You get an injunction, but I'm taking away Jeremy's freedom of speech and the world's. Or there will be no injunction and this hearing goes on. Sometimes you got to pick your battles. Was I happy about it? Absolutely not. But we were going to fight about it in the next hearing. Okay. Um, but I, I want a clear understanding. And, and 
and give me just a second to address Ms. Preston. Sure. Just without counsel, Ms. Preston, I, I'm not ignoring your needs here. I'm trying to balance mm -hmm. what's going on here. So there's there's plenty of case decisions um, by appellate courts that allow respondents and you to have counsel of your choice. So that's like two layers: right to counsel, right to counsel of your choice, right if to you can it. representation. Um, which, which includes a lawyer being represented um, with enough time and adequate opportunity to prepare. Mr. Shockett represents that he could do so. We haven't gotten to how much time he's going to need to do so. But the circumstance that's, that's changed, and, it, and quite frankly does significantly change, um, that if we have to come back, is that you'll have the peace of mind and the protection of the temporary injunctive relief that quite frankly would be what, the, what Mr. Shockett says when he said you, you'd be winning in effect. You'd, it, it, would, it would track the language of what a final judgment would look like, but ultimately we'd still have to come back to determine if in fact there's a final judgment, and if so, what its terms are. They would be very similar to this on all likelihood. The real question for the final then would be for how long? Forever, for a year, for three years, whatever. Um, and I understand all this. But what I know, I'm well aware of what they're doing. He is, he is trying to hold us in contempt of court in Ohio Correct. by using false lies. I know you said, lies. You said, you said that he's to me. He's making them up Here's and the he's using them in that court and we do not get to defend ourselves against it. I know, but you, you, and you so, mentioned that to me on the 29th you and the I'm, post. I'm not insensitive to that. But I, have, I brought proof to show just even at that point. one or the two things that he's okay. using in Ohio. Okay. I can prove right now today are false. So here's what's Flat relevant out. in this courtroom. When we go to hearing, if there's, if there's truth to what you just said, which is that he's trying to do these things in Ohio. He wants me in jail so may, that I can't be here. The threat, the threat. Okay, so the, the threat of falsely incarcerating you, I'm going to put that in a broad light most favorable to you of what you're saying, right. may have relevance and materiality when it comes to this court deciding has the behavior of Mr. Hales amounted to cyber stalking. But what you have to battle in Ohio about is whether the behavior you're describing amounts to a defense or or not of violating the Ohio um, right. injunction, unless it's brought before this court to adjudicate on the merits whether there's a violation. I could adjudicate whether there's a violation of the Ohio injunction based on his allegations of your behavior. Right. But if he's in Ohio doing that, it's got to go to that magistrate or that judge. I understand. Um, He's just using the, the time of this th uh, thing to make that case to try and make that happen. And that's what he's doing. And I do have the times, both times that Mr. Feather called me, uh, of when he called me and offered me all the offers on this case. So if he so wanted it over and done with, he wanted over and done with it about 4:45 on exactly November 29. There's no, there's no doubt all about that. All he has that. to do I is agree to I just didn't see how stop. we could accomplish that and provide due process for all the litigants, right? You and Mr. Hales, right? It would, it would have short circuited that and been an, an abomination I of understand. due process from this court's perspective. Um, and I wasn't gonna, not on any case, certainly not in this one, um, conduct conduct court in such a manner. Um, I am considering granting this continuance based on the fact that there's now a change in circumstance, which is the temporary injunction in place, and what I'm suggesting is additional language. Mr. Shockett, you wish to be heard on the, the specifics of the language? Yes, I don't, object to, I don't object to what you read gets put into the permanent as far, and we understand they're not to post something about each other. Uh, that, the Ohio, this is, a bio, this is reciprocal when you so, read Ohio and Florida. But I'm not going to put it in our order, right? I understand. It is and it isn't, okay? Uh -huh. My understanding the other day is that, and again, I think it was Ms. Preston that brought it up. I'm not disagreeing with it, but I think she brought it up, Mr. Feather, 
I don't know if he was in the loop on it or not, but what, what was said is, and Mr. Hales would know, and he could, you don't talk to me about it, but you can talk to your lawyer about it, is that in Ohio, there was a discussion about the possibility of doing a mutual injunction. Mr. Hales objected to it. I brought up, when that, when that was mentioned here in court the other day, I said, well, everybody should be aware. I, I presume the lawyer, your, Mr. Feather, was aware. Every, there are no mutual injunctions in Florida. There are no mutual injunctions in Ohio either. The judge never said, do you guys want to move forward with mutual injunctions? That was not what the judge said. The judge asked, would you like to settle or would you like to move forward with the hearing? And I said, move forward with the hearing. I'm not settling with this individual. This individual has broken the law, made our life a living, you know, turd purgatory. However, it could be, and this may be such a case, where the same two individuals can independently have an injunction against the other person, but the court has to look at this case and then look at that case independent. And so it's, it's legally possible and permissible that both people can establish competent substantial evidence to establish that which they need in terms of the relief from the injunction. Yeah, it talks about, the, I got the Ohio order, just interesting, but it's okay. not going to be ours, but th th this order includes any internet and or electronic communications. They shall not cause or encourage any person to do any act prohibited by this order. So it, it's, the best thing to, to calm things down is both parties just stop, you know, I'm posting. not doing anything, so please okay. stop okay. saying that. That's a, that's a dispute. It's a lie. Fact. Okay, it's gonna I understand. Be decided at well, I don't object to the language that you, that you have suggested. I, my suggestion I is... You can. Let me just check with my clerk here. Madam Clerk, I presume you could provide me an extended injunction of the temporary that's already in place. By the way, I, I don't, I may have been remiss, I may have just forgot. The record should reflect that at or about when we called court to order 115 or, or so, that at that time I wanted a record to reflect. Mr. Hales, you've been served with the temporary injunction, correct? You heard that, right? The judge knows I was illegally served in the courtroom. That is completely against Florida law. And he saw it, and he allowed it to happen. That this court uh, just entered today. A, right a, sheriff, a sheriff gave me a packet of paper. I handed it off to my representation. Okay. So, that, is, that is the temporary injunction Mr. Right. Shockett has. I got it right here. Okay. So what we're discussing now, Mr. Hales, is the, the court is inclined to grant your counsel, your current counsel's request for continuance on the condition that there's now a temporary injunction. The clerk is going to provide me with as a standard extended temporary injunction to the date that we're going to talk about when we're going to come back for it. But I'm going to add the language that you or anyone under your control and or employed by you and or in any way under your direction, including but not limited to any and all administrators of any form of social media has the responsibility to assure that you do not and they do not publish in any form whatsoever, utilizing any media platform or conduit of information of the name, image, and or likeness, and or any information, data, photography, videos related to or pertaining to the petitioner and or her minor child. It's a long way of saying cyber stalking from this court's perspective, and it, it will be similar in nature to the peace of mind you're entitled to from the Ohio court, as I understand it, in my review of that judgment. It'll Does be temporary, include? it'll extend through the date we come back, and at that point, when the court begins the proceedings, I'm gonna go to Ms. Preston and say, do you wish to present your case for it to be longer then, which is to get a final judgment. If she wishes to go forward, we'll go forward and we'll hear the case. Okay, just, here's a quick John question. Cook? May I just confer with him for a second? Oh, sure, okay, sure. Does that cover John Cook? It should, I wrote him on the first paper. I'm sorry? John Cook? My ex-husband who lives on my property, he was listed on the first order. So, Mr. Mr. Cook it does not have the protection of an extended injunction and would, would need to file pleading. He lives on my property. We live in the same building, the same home. I, I understand that, but I don't have a pleading. I think it's going to be fine. It should have been on the very first one. Over Mr. Cook. It, it wasn't. It should have been covered like he put Miss Grizz on his. I put John and the baby on mine. It should have been covered for all of us on the initial one. It asks anyone else to be covered under this, and I put John Cook and 
great Harley Grace Preston. Well, this this temporary is going to protect the child, but not Mr. Cook, who is an adult. All right. I'll have and and Judge, one more clarification. It's not filed on his behalf, ma'am. It was filed yeah. by you, but but not on his behalf. Right. I will have him file one immediately. Your Honor, one last point. It's very minor, and I appreciate this. Uh, they live right across the street from each other, so this 500 feet. No, we feet, don't. He has to cross. Ma'am, I, I didn't interrupt you. I'm you sorry. You interrupt me. He's got to at some point drive on the road, which is opposite her house, to get to his house. Mm -hmm. And I think that's less than 500 feet. So can we carve out something? He, when entering his home, he's allowed to you know, come close to closer than 500 feet, like maybe put it 100 feet or something like that. Um, Your Honor, there's two different ends of our road. One road okay. goes out by his house. One road goes out by my house. So there's two different exits. We can agree. I will go this way. He can go that way. Hang on. Ms. Preston, if you can raise your right hand. I'm sorry. Shall we swear or affirm the testimony of the given this cause will be the truth, all truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Are you, in fact, Let saying to the court that Mr. Hales can go to his house yes, and from his house down. without passing your house? Yes. Okay. Hang on. Let me talk to Mr. Hales. Mr. Hales, are you disputing that? Do you have to go by her house to get to your house or to leave your house? I do not have to. There is another way to go out on the main highway of Route 19. I own 75 acres. My main ranch is 70 acres. I also own the old ARC building, the schoolhouse. So home is the 70 acre ranch. They intentionally stalked us to Otter Creek, bought property across the street from us. I have to go through North Otter Creek to get to the schoolhouse where I'm running my business with my employee. I could go all the way around out on Route 19, which is high accident area there in Otter Creek. I'd rather not put myself in danger, rather not put my loved one in danger or my employees in danger. I would like to be able to r drive down my road to get back and forth to where I need to be. What would be the difference in mileage if you had to go out on the main road? It's probably, I would, I'm going to guess, maybe a mile going around in the circle on the main highway versus non-main highway. I'm not, I, I'm, I don't think there's a need. There's not, there's, not a, there's not good cause or justifiable reason to allow the, even the ingress and egress. It, it, it just doesn't make sense. It's creating and it's perpetuating a problem um, while this is going on. There's just no sense in running that risk. You're saying the, ri the risk or the, the downside of this court not carving out that exception is you got to drive a little farther, um, which I presume to get out of your neighborhood, you're going to drive on that road at some point, and I hope you're a safe driver um, and pay attention. Uh, and so it's a little bit of an inconvenience, but so is everything pertaining to these cases and, and, and multiple cases. I'm not insensitive to it, but it's like, Justice and, and the path to get to justice is, is inconvenient. Um, it's the same for me, Your Honor. I have to be inconvenienced to go all the way around to go to Chiefland. I have to go out all the way, go to the stoplight, when I could just shoot out in front of you. I'm entering an order about yeah. Mr. Hales. I want to make sure that he has a way to get to and from his premises. And I won't drive by him either. I won't drive by him either. Where's the road? This is the road. You yeah. either go here on the main highway yeah. to get over to the school. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I can go print right there. And I don't get in the middle of I could take a break and do it. Is this print over there? Okay. So I, as of right I'm now, I can't send it on my myself. property. Wait a minute. Where's the entrance here? You go this way. This is her. Where's your entrance? My entrance is 539 feet from, from her entrance. Then this you, is all my oh, property. Oh, okay. Then you can hear your say if you can enter here. motion sensor camera 24 7 that's what i want i was going to tell you to do that we're going to judge we, we just realize it's he can still do it within it's more than 500 feet away to get into his property so i would draw that request okay the, the the properties are not but the way his entrance is is over 500 feet even in the shortcut even using the shortcut so okay. he'll be okay so let me um let me do this
take a brief recess. I can go to my computer and um, have some put it there. Print out an addendum so it'll be the I'll extended the temporary injunction and under the appropriate section. Yeah, clerk, I don't know which one when there's another. I'll just, and I'll just um, feet from her house. type up that language that I just read in as, as the addendum. It's all forest or whatever. Yeah, just, yeah. Oh, just put it where you can see it. So, code early. We okay? Car, get your car coming out too. We good? We're good, we're good. All right, so uh, let's just stand at ease. Thank Give you. me five minutes. Okay. Could be at ease. Is that all right if I run out and change my daughter's diaper with my my ex husband, please? Yeah, yeah, we're taking a, we're taking a break here. Okay. Well, let's count all the things that were just wrong here in that statement. Number one, John's outside. He's not allowed legally to be outside. He can't be within five hundred feet of us. He does not have a court hearing. She has a court hearing. He is breaking the civil protection order. We'll be held accountable for that. Number two, four year old in diapers. Why? Number three, she claimed after all of her diapers were found on Dead Dog Road because they dumped them over there because Children's Services were coming to do an inspection on the property that her daughter doesn't wear diapers. And yet here we are under oath in court. Remember, I do. So help me God. Under oath in court, she's got to go change her daughter's diaper. I'm sure there's so much more wrong with this. All right, we're back on record. Yeah. Uh, this is a continuation of Hales and Preston. This case is 23DR416. Uh, all right, so we've prepared the extended injunction for protection against stalking. It includes reference to an addendum, which the court reduced uh, to writing. That'll become part of uh, the directive and the order uh, of this court. Uh, the injunction and the injunctive relief set forth in the order will remain in place through January 4 at 9 o'clock a.m. when we reconvene in this courthouse and in this courtroom for the resolution uh, of the rest of the matters in, in terms of presentation of evidence of that which began on November 29. Um, the respondent's motion to continue filed 12-5-23 is granted. The continuance will be to the January 4th date at 9 o'clock a.m. So Mr. Hales, I just want you, and I'm not expecting that you'll violate the terms of this, but you, you're entitled to be aware, aware of the fact that a violation of the terms of the injunction, including the language that's contained in the addendum that I've already read to you, uh, in Florida it goes, it goes one of two ways. Initially it'll go to the Office of the State Attorney. They can prosecute it as a first degree misdemeanor, which is punishable by up to a year uh, in jail. If they do not pursue it, then it gets remanded back to this court to pursue, um, if at all, as a matter of contempt, potentially you'd be facing up to six months incarceration. You understand a violation could result in either of those? You understand that? Yes. Okay. Do you have any questions for the court? No, sir. Okay. And then the second part of it, again, I expect you'll be here, but you understand it's your obligation to be back in court on January 4 um, here in Levy County. Yes. All right. I'll see you then. Counsel, anything further on your clients we have? Thank you, Judge. Ms. Preston, anything further from you or any additional questions or anything? No. Okay. All right. We'll stand adjourned. I'll see you all, if not before, maybe Mr. Shockett uh, in the new year. All right. Happy New Year. Good luck to you all. I'll see you then. Within seconds of leaving the Levy County Courthouse, Lynette Preston runs back in, declaring, I broke the civil protection order. As a matter of fact, right now, there are five, yeah, five contempt of courts that she has filed. And the docket says, I've been charged. Have I been arrested? Did I go to jail? Did any of this really happen? Well, you're going to find out in the next video.